Welcome to the Angel Room. Today's topic is Archangel Metatron. So a lot of times people have heard about various archangels, but there's so much more about them that has not been highly publicized, not well known. And I like to dive into that a little bit more to help you get to know these archangels better. So we're going to start with his name and Metatron's name has means one who guards or one who serves behind God's throne. It's pronounced Metatron, just in case there's any confusion about that. The origin of his name is the Latin word Metator, which means guide. It's also known as Metatron, Megatron, Meritron, Metatron. He's known as the angel of life and the angel of the covenant. So lots of different names these gone by through time. Let's start with talking about a little bit of how Metatron shows up in the history of humans. I, I find that part uh, very intriguing. In the Bible, Metatron, it's written about that he was human. He was living as the Hebrew, Hebrew prophet Enoch for 365 years as a human. And he became an ascended master when God transformed him into the powerful archangel Metatron. So he's only one of two archangels that started their life as humans. According to the Hebrew mystic and scholar Gershom Sholem, the prophet's Enoch, flesh was turned to flame, his veins to fire, his eyelashes to flashes of lightning, his eyeballs to flaming torches. He whom God placed on a throne next to the throne of glory received after this heavenly transformation, the name Metatron. In the Zohar, which is a collection of commentaries on the Torah, it states that while he was on earth, Enoch was writing a book that contained the inner secrets of wisdom. And then he was taken from this earth to become a heavenly angel. In the Hebrew Kabbalah, Metatron is the chief of the Kabbalistic archangels. He's credited with helping to deliver Moses and the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt. Metatron is said to be the spiritual brother of Archangel Sandalphon. And again, they're the only two archangels to have been human. Metatron has unlimited power to intercede on our behalf whenever we need him. He does this using sacred geometry and namely the Merkaba cube. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, a personal story with that later. It's the shape that represents all the shapes in God's creation and Metatron's work directing the flow of creative energy in orderly ways. This cube spins in a clockwise manner, harnessing centrifugal forces to clear away negativity from our energy. Metatron's energy is seen as deep pink and green. He's often depicted guarding the tree of life. I'm sure you've seen that symbol. It's very popular on clothing jewelry. His personality is powerful and upbeat. He is large and his wings are multicolored. Metatron raises the energy of everyone he touches. His ruling planet is Earth. And he's associated with a zodiac sign, Virgo, and the seventh chakra, which is your crown, the top of your head. So um, years, a few years ago, I was doing some work with the archangels and, and Metatron did give me this message. And I'm just going to pass it on to you. It wasn't meant just for me. He said, I am here to connect you with higher spiritual knowledge. Ask for my assistance for your special children. Allow me to lift you when you are troubled. Nothing is too difficult to request of me, for I can produce miracles with the grace of God. And when he said that, like I was just filled with the highest frequency. Um, archangels are such, such high level beings, celestial beings, that their frequency is, is incredibly strong. And however you feel it, whether it's chills, tingling, cooler, warmer, or, or that gentle touch, or that just that knowing of a presence, it's going to be very strong with an archangel and particularly Archangel Metatron. I've talked before about how each archangel has different areas of human life that they are responsible for overseeing. 
And with Metatron, those areas are spiritual wisdom, assisting spiritually gifted or sensitive children, feeling overwhelmed, overcoming procrastination, and miracles. So those are some areas that you want to keep in mind to ask for Metatron's particular assistance if you're needing in those areas. And later in the show, I'm going to give you some specific invocations for a variety of those topics. This is just a generic Metatron invocation I'm going to give you next. And, and some things, I did a lot of research, hundreds of hours of research for this info, um, because I'm always curious. I want to know more. I want to know the, un, I want to know the kind of obscure information about the archangels. And through this research, I found that here's some ways that you can enhance your your communications with Metatron, your invocations, which are requests for assistance. So you can hold in your hand a piece of multicolored quartz, watermelon tourmaline, or nephrite. Those are gemstones. Having sacred geometry in hand is also useful. It can be just a picture of it. It can be a 3D model of it. And in a diffuser, it's a really good idea to use essential oils, the ones for Metatron. Don't use all of these, but maybe no more than three or it'll be a hot mess. But the ones that are associated with Metatron are cinnamon, frankincense, which just is an overall powerful essential oil, lavender, lemon, patchouli, peppermint, rose, rosemary, or sandalwood. So a lot of lovely smelling essential oils in there just put several drops of each one into a diffuser. Let it run for about 10 minutes before you start so your immediate area really is got a, a good strong sense of these scents in the air. And then here's something that you can say just a generic Metatron request. Metatron, I ask you to enter this space and assist me with, insert your specific need, help me to access the spiritual wisdom which will help me the most assist, put the name of the child there, with embracing their gifts and moving forward in life with confidence. Shield this child from the energy of others. I ask that you also help me to deal with my challenges with courage and grace. I humbly request your urgent assistance with, enter the name, for a miracle. I thank you for honoring me with your divine presence and assistance, Metatron. And as always, these are not meant for you to say word for word. I, it's fine if you do, but it's more a guideline for you to put together your own request, your own invocation that feels comfortable, words that you would use, things that are pertinent to your situation. I have a couple stories for you. I, I have one of my own, but I want to start with one I found kind of by accident and I, I made note of it and put it aside because I knew I would eventually do the show about Metatron. And this is a real life story about how a particular archangel can make themselves known to you and become such a, a driving force of your awakening or you, your whole spiritual journey. So this story is by Kristen Taylor, a professional intuitive. And I found this on her website, kristentaylorintuitive.com. And that's Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-I-N, taylorintuitive.com. So these are her words. I first met Metatron in 2006 when he came to me as I was just about to go to bed. At the time, I was taking an archangel channeling class, but he was not one of the archangels we worked with in the class. So I recognized the energy as an archangel, but I could not identify which one. I felt him projecting light structures to me in the form of geometric shapes. I also felt a lot of white light filling up my entire bedroom. That night, I felt him doing an attunement on me to bring me closer to his energy. A couple of weeks later, I went to a psychic fair and my eye was drawn to a card with the image of Metatron on it. I instantly recognized the geometric shapes, even though I had never seen them before. The shape was called Metatron's cube. I also recognized the energy of the card. I was then certain that I had been visited by Archangel Metatron. At that point, I began working with Metatron consciously. I was hesitant to work with an angel outside of our class, so I was very cautious. I checked his identity and whether he was of the highest light many times, always a safe thing to do. 
and had several colleagues check as well. It was always confirmed to be Metatron, even though I knew nothing about him prior to this initial visit. I began to work with Metatron daily and gradually his energy began to integrate into my life. I had a lot of fear about beings and about channeling. So this was a very slow process. No matter how much I doubted or how fearful I was, Metatron was always patient and kind to me. He always met me where I was at the time. My life began to change, but the changes also were slow. I began to channel Metatron's energy daily following his request of 20 minutes of channeling with him per day. And channeling just means receiving messages. It took some time to really acclimate to his energy. I now realize it was because I was fearful, still quite new to channeling, and also working with a being as intense as Metatron requires an acclimation period. His light is so strong that it took me quite some time to adjust to his energies, several years in my case. Working with him was very different than working with the other archangels. Metatron is extremely powerful and has a broader focus than the others. So that's a, it's a really powerful story, and I like it because it's pretty, I, I don't want to say typical because everyone's experience is so different and personalized like most things in life. But it's a great example of how you can have not much awareness at all of a particular archangel and all of a sudden they're coming through to you. When I do um, meet your angelic guides readings or actually even in mediumship with people, I do some pretty intense spiritual protection before we begin. And the first thing I do is I call in the main archangels, which are Michael, uh, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, and as they come in, I'll feel them come in like standing, boom, boom, as they're called in. But if sometimes one will be quite a bit stronger and sometimes one is intensely stronger. And I know that that means they're with my client. They're helping my client at that time uh, with them assisting with a specific issue for them. So sometimes you have archangels with you, helping you personally that you might not even know until you really tap into these abilities to feel, hear, see your angels, particularly that feeling. So I'm going to tell you my story. My story came out of the blue too. I was uh, not feeling well, but I wasn't fevered or anything that like took me out of my head, made me altered in my thinking, but it was broad daylight and I was lying in my bed and I saw this geometric pattern start to form on the wall and it was kind of vague. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know if I, I don't know it was geometric. I knew it was sacred geometry, but I really didn't think anything of it. And a few nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was looking right at the top of my dresser, which was about three or four feet away. And on top of it was this spinning cube spinning clockwise and it was beautiful and it, it, it was had lights and it was just so beautiful and the energy the the frequency coming off of it was really intense and i i had really did not know what that was this was not something i had really put a lot of attention to um we can't specialize in everything no matter how hard you try you just run out of time and energy but I did not know what this was and I watched it for a couple of hours and I finally kind of passed out. And I mentioned it like when I moved to Sedona, which was maybe four or five years after that. And I was talking to some of my new friends who work in the spirituality field and that one, but all of them are just like, what? You saw a Merkaba. I'm like, okay, what's a Merkaba? And they're telling me like, that's a manifestation of Metatron like that. And it's actually, it's actually something that you it is part of you. And you can use that for all kinds of things, like literally time travel, traveling through dimensions, um, which meant something to me because not that I try to do it because I don't, but I will just find myself in in a waking state in these different places. And it happened last night too. Uh, it was in a different place. I don't even know where it was, 
but there was very interesting geometric shapes on the walls, the ceiling, until it kind of takes over the whole room. So I now think that that has a lot to do with that Merkaba's Merkaba, which is also Metatron's cube. So um, it's associated directly with Archangel Metatron. And uh, I, I know there's ways like on, on my other show, the Sedona Soul Sister show, we have talked about how to manifest it, to see it, because it's considered like an epitome of your spiritual attainment. Like I, I didn't, I did not try. I don't think I'm special or anything. I don't know why I saw that. I wasn't trying to, I didn't know what it was, but I do feel very honored that I've seen it a few times since then too. So I'm telling you this because sometimes the way Metatron comes through to you is not like as the typical angel, you know, how I describe the beautiful colored lights and, and it's sometimes that uh, Merkaba, which is directly associated with him. So keep that in mind. Since then, I just have so many visions of geometric shapes, uh, sacred geometry. And I've really, it's, it's interesting because early in my spiritual journey, I came upon a wonderful teacher named Belinda Howe. And hi, Belinda, if you're watching. And she introduced me to sacred geometry. And I really felt an affinity to it right away. I just was really interested. I use it regularly in my life, um, which is probably a show we should talk about sometime, but um, it's of the archangels. Why not? But it was something introduced to me a long time ago, like 1992. So I had that knowledge, but didn't really know the connection. She didn't really talk about Metatron or I don't remember that because it's, you know, a very, very long time ago. But anyway, here it was coming back into my life. And that was probably 13 years ago that I saw my first um, Merkaba. Yeah. So that was really interesting. And it was a wasted experience on me in the beginning. I knew it was amazing, but I didn't know how amazing till my friends in Sedona were like, Oh my gosh. And I can't believe you saw Merkaba, your Merkaba, blah, blah, blah. You know? And then I felt bad because I felt like I didn't deserve it because I didn't even know what it was. But the truth is it's not about deserving it or not deserving it. It's that if your angels decide or an archangel decides that you need an experience or you're ready for an experience or it's valuable to you there you're going to have it and so don't worry about it i don't think i'm special i don't think i'm you know better than anybody else um i'm not i'm just another human on this planet and the same is true for you you can experience these things and much much more there's no reason why you cannot so I want to get into some other things here that I think are so important because the archangels, they want to help us. They're, they're not with us all the time. And, and I know sometimes people swear that a certain archangels is their, is their special guide. And it's like, and that's fine. You know, I'm not going to argue that, but I will say in my experience, there's no archangel that stays with anybody all the time. That's like part of their permanent team. But I do think they join your team to help you as needed with specific tasks. So uh, because of that, perhaps there's something going on in your life in those areas I mentioned earlier of that Metatron is kind of in charge of that you would really like some special assistance. So I'm gonna give you a few invocations. This first one is for chakra clearing. If you're new to this, chakras really are not woo-woo. Chakras are science. And the reason is, is chakras are about energy and the flow of energy. It's all about science. So there's seven chakras in your body from your crown, top of your head, down to your root, which is the tailbone. So those, all of those points, there's, I was thinking about this last night, like how to explain this to somebody who's not familiar with chakras. I really think they're sort of like hubs of energy going through your body places where they come in and they go to other parts of your body. If those points, those hubs are not open and flowing, then the energy through your body is not flowing properly. That affects you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So that is why I thought it was important to talk about it in my book, but also I created a, a special guided meditation that's on my YouTube channel under my name, Ivory Lanou. It's free. Go check it out. 
that is to open your chakras to the fullest amount possible. And I say that because I do a lot. Sometimes I'll just help my clients. It's not something like I offer professionally, but if somebody comes in to see me and usually it's a grieving person, I do a mediumship, a lot of mediumship and helping people with a lot of really heavy issues in their life. And I'll feel that their heart chakra is really heavy, which means they're carrying a lot of emotional pain that's accumulated through their life. It could be recent. It could be from childhood. And I'll clear that because I can feel how awful it is. And I don't want to send somebody away from me with a heavy heart like that. So I'll clear it, but then I'll also tell them, please find somebody near your house where you live to, because they come from all over the world to see me in Sedona, find somebody who lives near you to do this, or I can teach you how to do it yourself. You've got to keep, you've got to have all your chakras open, not just your heart wide open, but all of them so that things are working properly. And if you're still going through a traumatic situation or very, a lot of stress, that's going to get closed again or partially closed. So it's a, it's a process. Like I do mine once a week. And if I start feeling that pain in my own heart chakra, I do it again, but not just that one. I'll do all of my chakras. So that meditation is like eight minutes long. Welcome to use it. Please do please tell people about it. I, I don't want to keep it a secret. So we're going to start with this one for chakra clearing. Again, put it in your own words. Archangel Metatron, I call upon you now to assist me in clearing my chakras. At least one of them are blocked and I'm feeling the lack of energy flow through my body. Please help me to clear all of my chakras from my root chakra up to my crown chakra so that my body may function at its best. I give my body permission to clear any blocked energy in my chakras at this time. My trust in you gives me complete confidence that I will return to a state of perfect energy flow. I ask that you aid my body in removing blockages by clearing each chakra to a state of full function. I will do all I can to release the emotions and experiences which led to the blockages, knowing that only through accepting that connection will I be able to keep my chakras clear moving forward. I welcome the increase of life force through my body. Archangel Metatron, thank you for your presence and your powerful assistance in clearing my chakras. Something in there uh, I want to talk to you about too, where it says about giving yourself permission. I give my body permission to clear any blocked energy in my chakras at any time. I was reminded of the power of that yesterday. So I've, I've been getting weekly ionic detox foot baths because sometimes my energy gets depleted through my work and I can get really uh, fatigued. So it's, and it's kind of common with my, with the work that I do that we have to be very careful with our energy. So yesterday I was doing that. There was a really nice young lady in there getting one with me. This is at my business. And I said, I just felt like compelled to say, I give my body permission to release all toxins from my body that are causing me disease at this time. And all of a sudden, like the water, just the stuff started pouring out into the water from my feet. And she looked at that and she's like, whoa. And I said, I learned that from Ed who gives the foot baths at my business a few years ago. I was, I had bronchitis and I got super sick. I was too sick to come in and he and, and my business partner, Roz are like, you should come in and get some foot baths. Cause it'll help you get your strength. And I'm like, okay, I, I dragged myself in, drove the 20 minute drive there. And I felt awful. I sat down in the chair. I started the foot bath and about halfway through, I thought, I don't feel so tired. And then afterwards I was completely like, I felt so good. I, I really felt like I was almost completely healed from that. And in the middle of that, it was my foot bath was not really, the water wasn't nasty like it would normally get. And that's pretty typical with this because it pulls a lot of stuff out of your body. And Ed says, did you give your body permission to release the toxins? And I thought, I wonder if that's goofy, but I'm doing it anyway. There's so many things in life that my Virgo logical mind goes, oh, that sounds like nonsense. And then I do it and it works. So, you know, I don't let that, I don't let my 
grounded logical side stop me too much from at least trying. So I said it and right away, boom, it started releasing. So I think that's a powerful lesson when you get your chakras worked on before you do that, say, I give my body permission to open my chakras to the fullest they can possibly be. Your body is listening to what you tell it. Your body is also listening to your limitations. So something to think about. And here is an invocation. Try not to sneeze. It's allergy season. This is for clearing away low frequency energies. Low frequency energies can be demonic. It can be just a, a creepy, scared feeling you're having. And it can be dark people, people who are very toxic, people who have nasty intentions. Um, you know, if it doesn't feel good to you, then it is not of the light. So that would fit this category. Archangel Metatron, please enter the space and assist me with your powerfully divine energy. I need your help in clearing away low energies that are affecting me at this time. It is clear to me that my energy is off balance, leaving me energetically drained beyond my system's ability to regulate it. I am energetically depleted and will need your help to bring my energy back up to its usual level or better. Please touch me with your mighty archangel healing so that I may feel better immediately. I understand that I am likely in a healing cycle and I'm unconsciously releasing pain from my physical, energetic, and emotional body. If my low energy is due to that toxicity, please help me liberate it from any layers it is stored within. Please allow the healing symptoms to be minimal and be over quickly. I ask that you help my energy to raise as quickly as possible to a level where I feel healthy and balanced again. Archangel Metatron, thank you for your presence and for your mighty clearing of low energies. I'm going to tell you something I've learned the hard way because I'm Virgo and I'm logical. So there's too many things through the years that I delayed because I overthought it and I judged it as being woo-woo, airy-fairy, crazy, goofy, whatever, you know, we, we all can do these things. But now I don't just go by my first reaction. My logical mind might tell me things like that, like, uh, you know, it just doesn't strike me as something that makes sense. But a lot of things that I have been taught and just found out through the years in my journey have turned out to be very powerful. And that includes like as an empath, like I'm just really sensitive to everyone's energy, their feelings, emotions, protecting myself and clearing that, you know, I've learned some techniques that my first reaction was what a load of puck. <laughs> it was just like, that can't be right. And then I do it because I respect that person immensely. And I know that they're very knowledgeable of what they're speaking of. I know where their journey's taken them. And so I'll try it and darn if it doesn't work. So don't let what your head tells you get in the way of trying something new. Don't make that mistake. I mean, you probably will because we're all just human. We're going to make a lot of mistakes. We're going to mess up along the way, but that's part of how we learn our lessons too. And we just forgive ourselves for not being perfect. We never will be. Perfection is an illusion. Try it anyway. You have nothing to lose by trying an invocation from Metatron or another archangel and asking for the specific assistance you need. I want to remind you again, not only are you not required to say these words exactly as I do, but it's best you put them in your own words. So take that, the thrust of that and put it in words you feel comfortable saying and make it pertinent to the situation you're dealing with. I'm going to talk about another one, which is invocation for helping with focus and discipline. You know, that's something that many people need on a regular basis. But during this time where we have COVID and the economy and the war in Ukraine and the gas prices, I mean, just everything kind of boom, boom, boom. We're being hit with a whole lot of extraneous stress and trauma all at the same time. It's very hard to stay focused and disciplined more than ever. So I think this is one that most people need. I'm talking to a lot of people with focus issues. So I know it's a, a common issue coming up lately. 
So Archangel Metatron, I invite you to assist me now. I need my focus and discipline to increase and become an easy, regular part of my days. Please help me to reduce distractions, organize my time, and remain firmly fixed on the task at hand. I ask you to nudge me when I am wandering off task and encourage me to return to my undertaking. Let me make this change with grace and gratitude, as I know I will be much more productive. Help me to be more disciplined in my thinking, my actions, and my daily plan. Let me appreciate the positive aspects of having a daily schedule and following it. Help me to see the progress I make and the positive benefits I receive from my efforts. I will need you to get my attention when I am procrastinating or ignoring important projects. Please know that I am ready to make this change and I will do all I can to ensure that it incurs, that it occurs. Archangel Metatron, thank you for your presence and your wise assistance in increasing my focus and discipline. Again, put it in your own words. You may think like, why is it so important that I be focused? Why is it so important? Part of it is when you feel yourself feeling really um, scattered, having trouble focusing on what you're doing, it is one of the effects of stress. And so a way to calm your mind and to calm yourself, your body is to allow yourself to be in that moment. You know, Eckhart Tolle, live in the now, <laughs> you know, there is that, that's a, it's become a, a big movement. And there's a lot of truth to it that, you know, if we live in the past, regretting what we choices we made or didn't make, if we live in the future about what might happen, we're missing out on what's actually happening right now. So right now, um, and this is how it affects me. And, and maybe you'll see a little of yourself in this. Let's say I have a day off. I have a day off and I'm like looking forward to getting some stuff done around my house. I have five things on my list I need to do. Sometimes I will find myself like I'll start to hang up the curtains and then I'll be like, oh, I wanted to fix, do this sewing project and I'll work on that. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I was hanging up curtains and go back to finish that. And then I'm like, oh, I need to finish this project over here for work. You know, I, I just feel like I, I have to really stay on top of myself. When I realize I'm doing that, I'm like, pick one. Ivory, pick one. What is it? What's the most important thing for you to accomplish right now today? All right, hang the curtains. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stick with that till those darn curtains are hung up. Then it's like, what's number two? What's the second thing? You probably aren't going to get all five of those things done today. So what's number two? And then I will go do that. And I may still find myself wandering off because I love to put it around my house and do things. And there's lots of things to be done. I know I'm not alone in this. I hear, you know, I've got friends who tell me the same kind of situation and, and uh, clients that describe the same thing. So just something to help yourself. Why is a schedule important? I think it helps having routine, having a place you're supposed to be, things you need to be doing, add structure to your life. And especially in times of chaos and dis-ease, which we are living in a big one right now, Having those things gives some normality to your life, to your routine, to your days that feels safe and good, something you can count on. This is something you can control is your, your schedule, your time, how it's used most of the time. And that's something you can do to help yourself to sort of calm and get into a more peaceful state, despite what's happening around you in your family, in your town, the country, the world, uh, you, you making yourself more peaceful and calm is actually helping others become more peaceful and calm. So the last invocation for Metatron today is one for, um, oh, you know what? I think I read the wrong one to you. Maybe not. This one's for motivation and organization. No, I didn't. I thought I skipped ahead. See, getting scattered. Archangel Metatron, I ask that you be with me now and help me with my motivation and organization skills. It has been difficult for me to find the energy or a strong enough desire to do the organizing that needs to be accomplished. Please begin with reminding me of the positive benefits which await this organizational work being done. 
I ask that you push me with nudges. Give me messages and signs of the importance of this task. Remind me of why this organization is a priority for me now. When I wander off task, please gently bring me back to the focus of my work. Please give me energy and stamina so this ordering is easily and quickly done. Inspire me with new ways in which I may organize things to be more efficient in order to make my life easier. Let me avoid making excuses and coming up with reasons to abandon this worthy project. Help me be true to my goals and steadfast in my progress. Archangel Metatron, thank you for your presence and your powerful influence on my motivation and organizational skills. This one goes hand in hand with the last one. Why is it important in the midst of all this chaotic stuff that you organize your space? Do a little experiment. If you haven't, just try to find an area that you see pretty regularly in your home or your office that bothers you. Like you keep seeing that's messy. That's how you know it's bothering you. It's messy. You're noticing it. Organize it completely and then see how you feel. I know for me, and maybe it's, maybe it is just my personality, but I don't think so because a lot of clients have said it had a powerful effect for them too. cleaning things up, organizing things little by little allows you to clean up your mind. It's cleaning up your energetic field, the area around you. I like my office to be a little bit minimal and everything put away, and it helps me get into the space I need to communicate with angels, to, to really let go and do my work in the way that I need to. If there were too many things, too much clutter, too many knickknacks, starts to bother me. It's just too much. And the same is true at my house. I might live with clutter for a while, and it's bothering me, and I know it, like because I'm like, uh, I don't like that area. So I'll start cleaning up those areas one by one and more and more I feel better. Getting rid of things falls under that category too. You'll feel better just getting rid of things, stuff. It's energetic clutter. You start cleaning up your space, whether it's at home or at work, you get rid of extraneous things. Even if it's things that have been stuck in a closet or in the garage, it's still extra energy. Boy, the angels are really coming in about this. And you start to feel better. You just feel lighter, freer. Anything you can do to make yourself feel better, whether it's in a, a more practical way or an energetic way is going to help you in these trying times. And I'm all about that. So the last one is helping with focus and discipline. Archangel Metatron, please help me to increase my focus and discipline. I find my attention wandering, which makes it difficult to get my projects and work done as planned. I ask that you help me to keep my goals in mind always so that my focus is sharp and consistent. Please aid me in being a more disciplined person in all areas of life. I desire to adhere to my schedule, get tasks done in a timely fashion, and be an efficient person both at home and at work. Help me to pay closer attention to what is said what I learn, and other details. I ask you to help me put a higher priority on being focused, as I know it helps me remember important information. Let me pay better attention to the feelings of others and have more control over my emotions. Archangel Metatron, thank you for your presence and your assistance with focus and discipline. This is another one. I'm Time is our most precious commodity. We only have so much of it. And even though there's a lot of chaos going on in the world right now, your time is ticking by second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, and you won't get it back. So what are you here to accomplish? A lot of you watching this show, I won't be surprised to find out you're light workers. You're on a spiritual journey. You, you're already working your mission, or you know you have a life purpose, but you haven't discovered it yet. Why do you think you're here? Are you supposed to be finding your life purpose? Then really put your focus on that. You know, I think your family, your loved ones, your friends, the people in your life are a huge part of why you're here, you know, and, and that love and attention to the people, your spiritual side, whether it's religious, spiritual journey, either one, hugely important. So what do you want to put your time and attention to? That's why it's important. That's why it's a big deal 
to stay focused so that you can get things done. I know for me, when I was writing my first book, which hasn't even been published by the publisher yet, I had to let it take over my life. And it was because I had a really short deadline for getting that whole book written. So I just dove into that thing and, and I really am proud of it. And I, I enjoyed the process, but when I came out of that, I realized how out of kilter my life was. I hadn't seen my friends. I hadn't hardly talked to my daughter. I hadn't been able to do much fun at all other than write and go to work, write and go to work. So it was a good lesson for me that moving forward, I was finished. I still had half of my book, let your angels lead left to write, to finish writing when I finished that contract and I decided to do it in a different way. I wasn't going to put every second of my time into writing because life gets out of kilter. So, you know, the areas that Metatron covers Metatron rules over and anything that fits within those is a wonderful thing to ask him for help. Um, I encourage you to do so the archangels want to help us. Then the neat thing about them is that Metatron can be with millions of people all at the same time. And that's why he can't be like on somebody's actual angelic team, because he's with so many people at the same time. I mean, he could be helping you as part of your team temporarily. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, Metatron's not one I feel a whole lot. Uriel and, and Raphael and Michael and Gabriel come in for me regularly, but Metatron comes in through sacred geometry. So you might not have even have known about that connection with the Macabre or even known you were seeing it or sacred geometry and Metatron, but hopefully that gives you like a little starting point to do some diving in of your, for yourself into this really fascinating, highly powerful archangel. I want to thank you for tuning in this week and say a special hello to my listeners in the United Kingdom. So delighted to have you here. Uh, mentioned to you, I do have a book, Let Your Angels Lead. It's available on Amazon. And tune in next Sunday when the topic is the six types of empath. In the meantime, may your angels surround you. May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. Bye.